Now to discuss measure of dispersion. In statistics, we have discussed measure of central tendency. And there are three components through which we can find out the measure of central tendency. One is mean, second is median and third is mode. Now let's have an example. There are two batsmen and the data shows batsman A, the data shows the run scored by the batsman A and batsman B in last 10 matches. This is the run 30, 91, 0, 64, 42, 80, 30, 5, 117, 71. And these are the marks, uh, these are the runs uh, done by batsman A. And the batsman B scored 53, 46, 48. 50, 53, 53, 58, 16, 57, and 52. Now, if we look at the data and want to find out the mean and median of batsman A and batsman B, then we came to know that mean of A is 53 and median of A is again 53. If you calculate the mean of batsman A is 53 and median of A is 53 and the mean of B batsman B is again 53 if we calculate and median of batsman B is again 53. Now, if we want to analyze the data based on the measure uh, of central tendency, in the both in both the in both the cases, mean and median is same, but data is different. A scored 30, 90, 91, sometimes 0, sometimes 64, sometimes 117, sometimes only 5, sometimes 71. Run. But batsman B, 53, 46, 48, 50, 53, 53, 58, 60, 57, 52. That means batsman B's performance is more consistent than batsman A. It shows that batsman A sometimes may go very well with his performance, but sometimes in this case 0 and sometimes in this case 5 he may perform very low. So measure of sentence tendency at this point of time do not give the true measurement, do not give, do not represent the data accurately or truly. So how we can find out that whether the data or whether the uh, information is consistent or not. We use for this purpose, we use measure of dispersion. Right. Now, there are four components of finding out measure of dispersion. One is range. Second is quasi deviation. Third is standard deviation and for this mean deviation. Measure dispersion has four components range, quartile deviation, standard deviation and mean deviation. Right? 
Now, first we will discuss about the range. How we can find out the range of the range of the data? Range can be find out by the highest value of the data. The formula for finding out range is highest value of data minus lowest value of data. Now, if we want to find out the range of maximum A and range of maximum B, in this particular case, range of A, uh, we are representing range of A with R A. Range of A is, what is the highest value in this data? 117. What is the lowest value? Value in this data that zero. So range of A is obviously 117 runs. That's me. The data is scattered between the value 0 to 117. The range shows that. And what about the range of B? Range of B is what is the highest value in this case? Minus the lowest value in this case, 46. Yeah, 46. So in this particular case, range is 14 runs. And in this case, the range is 117 runs. This shows that the data, the two data, which have the same mean and the same median, may show the different ranges. This shows that range of the data uh, has the value scattered between the value 117 and in here all the data is scattered with themselves with the value of 14. So this is the way to find out the range. This shows the dispersion of the data. Dispersion of the data with a value with a magnitude 117 and range of B shows the dispersion of data with a magnitude 14 with the value 14. Okay. So range is the simplest uh, component of measure of dispersion through which we can find out the dispersion among the data. There are other methods of finding out the measure of dispersion as well. We will now discuss the next component, the other component of measure of dispersion is mean deviation. Now, mean deviation is again of three types. A, mean deviation from mean. B is mean deviation from median and C is mean deviation from mode. It means what? Mean deviation can be find out all the three components of major center tendency. So mean, so median and so mode. Mean deviation can be find out from all the three components of major of center tendency. That is mean, that is median, another one is median and the mode. Now let's discuss how we can find out the mean deviation from mean and mean deviation from median. First we will discuss mean deviation from mean. Take a very simple example. Suppose there are three numbers 10, 20, and 30. Let's say this is the marks obtained by three students in a class 10, 20, 30. If we find out the mean of this data, the mean would be 
x bar is equals to 10 plus 20 plus 30 divided by 3. So that would be 50 upon 3, that is 20. Right? Okay. Then we need to find out the deviation from mean. Deviation of each value of x from the mean of that theta. x minus x bar. So in this case, 20, 10 minus 20 would be minus 10. 20 minus 20 is 0. And 30 minus 20 is 10. Right? So this is the value. This is the mean deviation from the mean of each data. Okay? And mean deviation is something if we add them together, the deviation, if we add the deviation together, then that would be minus 10 plus 0 plus 10. That would be 0. It means what? If we take deviation, if we take deviation of each value from the mean and, and we add together, it would always be equals to 0. It means what? The mean deviation from mean will always be 0 if we add them together. Then we need to slightly change to find out, slightly change the formula, slightly change the technique to find out the mean deviation from the mean. Instead of taking the actual value of the deviation with, I mean, the negative sign and the positive sign. We actually know the negative sign of the data. It means what? We actually find out the deviation, absolute value of deviation. What is the absolute value of deviation? That is x minus x bar, the absolute of that. That means we would ignore the negative sign of the deviation. So minus 10 would be treated as plus 10. 